It's time for On Point, where we speak to experts on some of the key issues in the spotlight right now. Now, as we just saw, the U.S. Federal Reserve announced another interest rate hike of 0.75 percentage points. Without further ado, let's dig deeper into what we can expect from this decision and what it means for the global economy. We have Professor Ojiar of Hanyang University for the analysis. Good morning, Professor. Morning. Pleasure to be on the program. First, the World Bank has warned of a global recession if central banks continue to raise interest rates. Yet the Fed still went ahead with an interest rate hike. How close are we to a global recession at this point? Right. Um, so your question actually has been the subject of intense debate in recent months among the economists. So on the one group, like Olivia Blanchard, for example, said a significant increase in unemployment and the slowdown of growth would be unavoidable. Um, while others like Jan Hatchius at Goldman were still hopeful of a soft landing. Um, now the recent trends are pointing towards the former group's views being closer in line with the reality, unfortunately. Um, the August latest inflation numbers were substantially higher than the market consensus estimate, which was 8.3% versus 8%. Um, and inflation just isn't showing any signs of coming down anytime soon. And that's the reason why Jerome Powell addressed in after the FOMC meeting yesterday that um, meeting the 2% inflation goal is probably the most important goal that the FOMC can do at the moment, and that they will bring down the interest rates by whatever means necessary, suggesting that some pains along the process may be unavoidable. Right, and the exchange rate between Korean won and the US dollar seems to be something the government is trying to get some control over at the moment. But if South Korea continues to follow in the footsteps of the feds, doesn't that put South Korea at a risk of recession as well? Absolutely. And as your news flash earlier um, just rightly showed, South Korea's base interest rate is now 75, points, uh, 75 basis points lower than the U.S. rate. And with U.S. expected to increase the rate by another 1.25 percent by the end of the year, it doesn't leave our Bank of Korea much room for maneuver. And the market is expecting at the moment that exchange rates will be in the mid 1400s through October and November. One thing that makes monetary policy in Korea more difficult than in other countries, though, is the fact that people have been borrowing a lot, taking advantage of cheap interest rate and been investing heavily in the South, um, housing market. South Korean households assets are disproportionately skewed towards illiquid real estate investment. And I think this can be a cause of concern going forward as the interest rates rise and the interest, interest rate payments on those variable rate loans on housing begin to bite into the wallet of our household consumers. Now, I've asked this to like many times so far in, the, in recent interviews, but when will this trend stop? At what point will central banks around, across the world know that enough is enough with the, the rate hikes? Um, I wish I had a clear answer to that as well, but uh, I think the FOMC made it clear after the meeting yesterday that getting inflation down to 2% is the most important signal. Um, there have been talk of more dovish stance among some members of the economists that if we see a clear downward trend in inflation and inflation expectation coming, coming down to maybe somewhere between 25 to 3%, perhaps we can then begin talking of putting the brake pedal a little less aggressively but what our experience have shown over the, say, past six to nine months is that it has been a very volatile and unpredictable movement. After the July numbers came out, the markets were hopeful that the consensus was, you know, that the rate itself was much lower than the consensus and that inflation had peaked. And the August number that we saw last week was a complete reverse of that. It was about as 
0.3% higher than the consensus. So we are not really clear as to how quickly and where the inflation trajectory is. And until we are sure of that, and until we are sure that people's inflation expectations have come reasonably down with a great deal of certainty, I don't envisage central banks making any accommodating circumstances anytime soon. Well, yes, uh, this is such a complicated topic for everyone, but I think you've done a great job for me and the viewers on putting it in a simple form. Thank you so much, Professor, again, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you.